put out that the sun shines down its power to all the world and makes the wind blow strong as it will. I want to hope gentle rains can fall upon the land so lovely earth can stay lovely still. Ladies and gentlemen, well, welcome to Energy Week with George Harvey, me, and the amazing Tom Fennell in, in the, the flesh. flesh. <laughs> <laughs> this is our 324th episode. I have got to the point where I think I know in advance, once in a while, what Tom is going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you do, and I know, I, and you too. I, uh, <laughs> Well, like we've last week I was reading something and I said, boy, that sounds an awful lot like George, and it turns out you were the author. Yes, that's <laughs> right. You know that, that story, which is called When Will uh, the Co Prices for Renewable Energy Stop Dropping or something like that? Something like that. That's yeah. had over 20,000 views. In, well, in, it's, a, it's a good question, and there's no answer to that question. Well, there is an answer, which is they probably won't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But nevertheless... Uh, here we are. Today is the 27th of June, and we are going to start our, our uh, items on the news on Thursday, the 20th of June. We start with a picture. We start with a nice picture of the Himalayas. Himalayas, or Himalayas, Himal as some people say. I was going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> and there's the Himalayas. Himalayas, and our story is from CNN. Oh. That's not Everest, by the way. No, that's not Everest. It is in Nepal. I believe that, yeah. yeah. I've been to Nepal. Have you? Yeah. My brother was in Nepal. I stayed at a motel, motel, called motel. the Everest View Motel. <laughs> no roads to it. You had to get there by airplane. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, no. An Airtel. Yeah. There you go. Okay, what have you got here? Well, let's, let's uh, talk about this here. I guess usually about this time. I mentioned that. Uh, oh yes, we have to we introduce are all those things. We're going to look at approximately 21 different items. Yeah. Some of these are very interesting, very deep, and very in depth. That's the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> and you might want to look some of them up. I mean, we could devote a whole show. To I got to ask you a question, yeah. Tom. Did you look at the video that you could get to from that story about the Tesla truck? I'm Simone not sure. Gertz, I, I know I was playing that. with it for a while. I saw the, the the desired truck. We'll talk to it. Yeah, she did a good job. She did a good job, <laughs> and and uh, that she did a video. And you know, this is one of those things that Tom is talking about, where if you go into it, and we'll talk about it. But well, you can, some of these things you can are get worth looking at. at. Oh yeah. You know? So we'll try and mention Absolutely. some of the better ones. And I but should, you can you can access any one of them. I should do my introductory stuff anyway because I forgot all together. Yeah, yeah. Why not? The material on this show comes from my blog, which is called geoharvey.com, and that is G-E-O-H-A-R-V-E-Y.com. I'm sorry for the name. I couldn't think of anything better. <laughs> and and, and uh, if you go to the blog and you can click on a calendar that will take you to the entries for that date, I have 10 to 15 entries every day. Um, there were over, I've got over 33,000 uh, articles linked from there now. It's a lot. 33,000 articles. More than several. It's, yeah, more than a few. And um, if, you, if you click on that date, it'll, it'll give you the 10 to 15 articles that went up that day, and you can find the articles that we're talking about. So that's the first thing. The second thing that I should tell everybody is we need to get... Four hundred and eighty dollars. This is the commercial, guys. <laughs> this is the commercial. <laughs> we need to get four hundred and eighty dollars to support the show, and for that purpose, I have been telling people that you could get, if you make a twenty-dollar donation by going to the BCTV website, and at the point where you're making the donation by by uh, PayPal or or I think credit card. You're not donating to us, guys. You're, You're not donating, donating to, to us. I'm not getting anything. Your donation is costing me money because what I have said is the first 24 people to make a $20 or more donation there will get one of these two books that I wrote. 
um, at the pearly gates, which is about people going to, to, the, to, the, to the pearly gates and talking oh, to Oh, really Peter. short story. Very, very micro short stories. The other one is this, which is gaining the past. And I'm going to read just a little bit from this. This is a story about how and why Lao Tzu wrote the Tao Te Ching. Oh, OK. Yeah. And what happens is he shows up at the gate. He wants, at the pass, he wants to get out of the country to retire. And the, the, um, the border guard. It's not the pearly gate. This is a different no, this, gate. Is, this is a gate a out, gate. Of, out of the Chinese uh, place where he is. The border guard is named Wen. And this is just, you know, um, he job. goes to Wen and he says, I want to leave. And Wen says, what do you declare? Lao Tzu says, Master Warden, I have nothing but this bundle. It ha has only a quilt, some clothes, some food, some tea, my bowl. Wen opens the bundle and looks through its contents. Where is the rest? Lao Tzu, slightly bewildered. That's all there is. Wen, don't you lie to me. Your friend said you were a great philosopher, did he not? Lao Tzu, puzzled. He did. Wen, do you deny that you're a great philosopher? Lao Tzu, Master Warden, monastery constrains. Wen, roughly, modesty is a proud man's way of concealing his pride. It's dishonest. I'll have no <laughs> modesty here. Can you deny that you're a great philosopher? Lao Tzu, I shall not deny it. However, neither do I admit it. When your inability to deny, it, to deny it is proof enough. You are a great philosopher, and I demand to see your baggage. Great philosophers always have great baggage. <laughs> and that is a play. It's one act. It has never been produced, but it has won an award. I'll be darned. Isn't that amazing? And by the way, speaking of philosophy. Speak. I have, uh, I want to take just a couple of seconds to congratulate my daughter, Susie, mm -hmm. the little girl who would come to my door mm -hmm. at, just as I was about to turn the light out at night and ask me to read from her book. <laughs> she just got her doctorate. In well, good for her. PhD in philosophy from, from, the from England, right? No, Scotland? Scotland, University of Glasgow. And um, the book that she wanted me to read to her when she was nine, yeah. Bertrand Russell's History of Western Philosophy. <laughs> a little oh. advanced for a nine-year-old, I would yeah, say. Yeah, well, Suzanne is um, now, uh, I, I, I'm going to stop calling her Susie, and I'm going to start calling her Doc. <laughs> <laughs> Good for her. OK. Um, let's right get along. back to where we were <laughs> a few minutes ago. Um, this is an item from CNN. I'm going to pull that and picture we have up the, again. The Himalayas in yeah, Nepal. Yeah, pick, pull that picture up again. And I will read the uh, caption here Himalayan glaciers are melting twice as fast as last century. Climate change is eating away at Himalayan glaciers at a dramatic rate, a study revealed, spanning 2,000 kilometers and harboring some 60, 600 billion tons of ice. Himalayan glaciers supply uh, around 800, 800 million people with water for irrigation, hydropower, and drinking, and they are going away. And they're going to affect a lot of people. Oh, this is really a disaster. We're going to have well, to. This article is from CNN. Solutions. Yes. And like much from CNN, there's a lot of ancillary stuff there. Yeah. There's a good video. There's a load of pictures. It's an interesting site to visit. Now, I got yes. a quick takeaway here. Himalayan glaciers have been losing almost a half a meter of ice each year since the start of this century, double the amount of melting that occurred between 1975 and 2000. A report warned that most glaciers in Central Europe, Western Canada, and the United States could vanish by the second half of this century under the current ice loss rates. Water shortages could trigger mass migration. Yeah. There's an interesting picture there. There's a photo on this website of sled dogs walking through water. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Duh. Yeah. They ain't supposed to be any water there on dog sleds. That's right. And it happened it was in Greenland, and it's just a symbolic of what's happening to Greenland, which is rather uh, Scary. The thing in Greenland is scary. The scariest part is the part of what's is the stuff that's going on with the permafrost melt, oh, which yeah. is seventy years ahead of schedule. Well, we're going to touch base on that, aren't we? Whoa. Okay. Should we move on? I think we should. We have an item here from NPR. 
Yes, yes. Trump administration weakens climate plan to help coal plants stay open. <laughs> huh? <laughs> well, and we'll be talking about I this say? again later, but let's talk about it President, now. President Trump has thrown his latest lifeline to the ailing coal industry. The EPA released the final version of its affordable clean energy rule. It's supported by the coal industry, but it's not clear that it will be enough to stop coal-fired power plants from closing. Today in the news, and we will have it next week, uh, news came from the uh, Energy Information Administration, which is part of the USDOE, that the amount of electricity produced by coal last month um, was lower for the first time in history than the amount produced by renewables. I thought we've touched base on that already. Well, this, this is from the, e, from the EIA. Okay. And, the, and what they have said is, um, uh, coal uh, renewables produce 23 percent of the electricity in the United States, which is a big jump Absolutely. from the previous month, and coal produced 20 percent. So this is not just a, a, a crossover. This is a big gap. Well, coal is the walking dead. Boy, yeah. It really is. It's no longer economically sound, and uh, ec economics will dictate. Yeah, and th this stuff that's going on in Washington, by the way, I've got opinions about that that would put certain people in prison. <laughs> um, yeah. And I'm speaking as a as you know a person who is is a conservative. I don't I don't think Theodore Roosevelt would allow those people to wander the streets. And I'm talking about people in the White House, people in Congress. Well, conservatism has kind of drifted from its original meaning. Yeah, it's become um, kind of oligarchy. white supremacy. It's become an oligarchy. Yeah. Well, let's see what I got from this article. Industry supporters have said the Obama administration overstepped its authority under federal law when it issued the more sweeping power plan in 2015. But 52 coal-fired power plants have either shut down or announced they will shut down since Trump was elected. Yeah, Trump's war <laughs> against coal. Yeah. Basically is <laughs> it's what's going on. Working, isn't it's it? you know, it it is as valid to say Trump's war on coal as it was to say Obama's war on coal. They're both the whole thing is because of economics. Well it's economics that's doing it, yeah. Yeah. I mean okay. Trump supports coal, but there's nothing to support. Yeah. Okay, we are up to an item from investing.com, still June twentieth. Yeah, and this one is the Pennsylvania governor wants to tie nuclear ba bailout to joining RGGI, which you will just tell us yeah, what the, that is. The Pencil uh, Democratic Pennsylvania Governor Tom Wolf asked Republican lawmakers to authorize the state to join the Regional Greenhouse Gas Initiative as part of a nuclear bailout deal, according to reports from local media and analysts. The governor's office did not comment, but the Gre Regional Greenhouse Gas Initiative includes all the New England states. Except Pennsylvania. Well, well it says not, that's all not of the Northeast. All of the Northeastern states except, except Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Yeah. And if I could name them, but it really isn't that necessary. Yeah, I was going to say. It's everything but yeah. Pennsylvania. Yeah. And the previous governor was dead against it. The previous governor was dead against it. As a matter of fact, um, uh, the governor of New Jersey pulled New Jersey out. But they're back in. But they're back in. Yeah. So that's where we are with that. Should we move on? Well, I think so. I was going to say what RGGI is, but we've already well, decided that. Regional Greenhouse Gas Initiative. Okay, we're up to Friday, June 21st. Oh, we've got a, a picture coming and up. And we have this is, a, this is This, this is the this article is I was talking about this with a video. This is kind of fun. Let me f this is absolutely Come on, wild. Uh, there it is. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. That is Simone Gertz and her Tesla Model 3 truck. <laughs> and look at that. That looks pretty good. All right. What do you got for a title? This is from Clean Technica. The self this self proclaimed queen of, and they use, use the bad word here, <laughs> <laughs> queen of robots builds the first Tesla truck. I, I oh, inserted on, the guy. word "word" in parentheses yeah. in the title for this thing. For the bad word this, that you're not this allowed to use This girl has got TV. a little bit of a muck mouth going, and she admits <laughs> it. But um, nevertheless, Tesla's pickup truck is set to be well, unveiled. I'll leave the truck up there because it's yeah. Do that is set to be unveiled in a few months, but one eager maker just had to go off and make one for herself. <laughs> Simone Gertz 
who is known, uh, has shown some seriously odd robotic creations on her YouTube channel, built herself the world's first Tesla pickup truck, and there it is, right on the screen. You can see it, and there she is standing in front of it. And amazingly, this girl bought herself a brand new Tesla Model 3 and then proceeded to chop it up. Well, in her own words, she made a deal with herself early on that she would not drive a gas-powered vehicle. Yeah. But she wanted a truck. <laughs> so she went out and made one. And if you visit the uh, site, there's another picture of the truck. Well, you, know, you can the, see it up close. At it, the, she, did a, she did a good job. Yeah, at the Clean Technica site, there is a link. And you, you just have to look through the links as they show up in the, in the article. But yeah. early on in the article, there's a link to her YouTube uh, video of this, which is half an hour long, and it shows that's why I didn't watch it. All yeah. of the stuff it shows going. Shows the steps. Huh? It shows the steps. Sounds interesting. I'll and then, the if you go it. to her YouTube channel, you'll discover that she actually built an ad for this truck, uh -huh. which goes through. It's, it looks like a professionally, well, almost like a professionally made um, automotive advertisement with a, you know all the things that these things do, driving off road. You know, uh, uh, um, with the tires throwing dust in the air. You know, it's just, <laughs> it's pretty crazy, and it ends with the words. That, um, she calls this thing truckla. Truckla, yeah. She, truckla. Uh, truckla. truckla. That's truckla. The uh, the the new truckla available nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's famous for some of her previous creations. Yeah. A hair washing robot. <laughs> yes. A drone that carries babies. Yeah. And a robot that feeds you popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> she had a robot that had a hand gloved, which would slap her in the face to wake her up. <laughs> <laughs> she, she interesting person. Interesting, Very yeah. interesting person. Okay, well, we should probably go on. Here. Our next item is from Clean Technica. Uh, also has to do with um, the same industry. Well, this is interesting. Yellow light in the U.S. auto industry. Consumer demand problem growing for gas cars. That's uh, not surprising. No, it's not. A recent article in Forbes highlighted that J.D. Power, Power and LMC Automotive have found, quote, a growing backlog of unsold new cars and trucks, end quote, across the country. The reason? Sales are down. People are buying fewer and fewer gasoline-powered cars. Well, uh... There's some nice charts in, in, in yeah. this. And also there's a picture of a vast field of unsold cars. Yeah. It's like about a thousand cars. Yeah. And it's they always have this field, but it's never been this full. Well, they they talk about the backlog that they have, which is I think my recollection is that it's normally a 60-day backlog, and they have now got 70 eight, Something like that, eight almost 80 days. So they're about 30% yeah. over. This is not good for the you know, for economics of that particular industry, but interestingly, it happens just as Tesla is becoming bigger and bigger on the market, not just in the United well, States, but worldwide. Well, that's tied right into this. It's tied it's, right as, in. As it says in the article, there is a consumer demand problem. But it seems to be a problem for gas cars, not for Tesla. Yeah, yeah. So Tesla's backing up the orders. Yep. Okay, we have a picture of and a. Got another interesting picture here. <clears throat> and another item item from Clean Technica, which I did not write. <laughs> now that is a artist's conception of a new type of nuclear plant. Yeah, which we've mentioned. It's called a modular, um, small modular reactor. Okay, what do you have for title? Well, small modular reactors. They make them in a factory and ship them on, yeah, on a highway. On huge trucks, and they can't go under most bridges. These oh, things, is that so? Yeah, they are gigantic. I didn't gigantic. think they were that big. They are big, but they can, if you, if you plan, it's, it's not as bad as moving a house, <laughs> when you put it that way. Fooled again. New ACE, in quotation marks, Power plan brings back energy, nuclear energy jobs, not coal jobs. And George is going to tell us what ACE stands for. ACE is an affordable clean energy plan. And the, the ACE plan was announced with great fanfare and coal miners in attendance. ACE replaces uh, President Obama's clean power plan with one that stresses both affordable and clean. And guess what? 
That leaves coal in a death spiral because it is neither affordable nor clean. And guess what? Although she doesn't stress it all that much in the article, Tina Casey, who wrote this, says, um, uh, you, you, you doesn't say, and by the way, nuclear is, is not just clean but affordable. Nuclear isn't affordable. Not really. Not, <laughs> not, not if you count all of the... Uh, all of the all stuff the that goes into that. Yeah, it's crazy. Well, there's a takeaway from here. Okay. Cheap natural gas has been the main driver pushing coal out of the U.S. power generation marketplace. And we will talk Renewable about that Renewable energy soon. has begun to threaten both coal and natural gas. Yeah. Okay, and it is. And this is less, there is less fear about nuclear plants in, back, in one's backyard than there is for things like wind. Which is surprising. It's, it's, this is crazy. It really is. <laughs> Advocates of small modular reactors are, are hoping such reactors could be deployed at former coal plant sites. Well, that's what they hope. Well, that's what they're hoping. Economics is going to dictate. Economics is going to have a great deal to do with it. The problem is not only do they have to, have to show that they're clean, which they can argue, but they have to show that the electricity that they produce is going to be produced at a, at a competitive rate. Well, that's what economics means. And exactly. quite frankly, I don't believe they can. I'm with you there. I wouldn't bet against it. Though. And, you know, you, we, you were just talking about uh, natural gas. Yeah. What about our, new, our next item also from Clean Technica? Clean Technica is on a roll here. This is, well, this is a portent of things to come. It's about GE, who we talked about a lot last week. Yep. GE will shutter California natural plant, natural gas plant 20 years early. That's right. This is September, June 22nd, by the way. California Energy Commission is, is um, oh, GE notified the California Energy Commission that it is shuttering the Inland Empire, uh, Inland Empire plant in Riverdale, California, according to Reuters. The Inland Empire plant was only commissioned in 2009. It's 10 years ago. This is a 10-year-old plant. GE invested roughly $1 billion into the plant, but its operations has be have become uneconomical. That, that has something to do with economics, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it might. Well, we've, we've talked about GE last week, and yep. uh, this is what, one of the things that's happening. Uh, GE is getting into... Uh, turbines, big time now. We'll, we'll talk about that. Right. I got a quick takeaway here. Yeah. Such generating facilities that they're just talking about here normally have a 30-year useful life. Okay, so GE is losing two-thirds of its roughly billion-dollar investment. Which is bad for a, a company oh, that yeah. is already in serious they're trouble. They're in trouble now. Demand for GE turbines has collapsed due to the steep decline in the price of renewable energy. Well, the same thing happened to Wartzilla. Yeah. We talked about that months yeah, absolutely. ago. Absolutely. You know. Also, tur and this is a big one, turbines are not easy to stop and start quickly. We were talking about regular gas turbines. Yeah. yeah. And are ill-suited for ramping up when the supply of energy diminishes. Yeah. But if you've got solar and wind and you're storing it, you flip a switch and it's on. The, the demand the response for, for solar wind with batteries is like a thousandth like, of a second. Yeah, it's like instant. Where, where traditionally we've got really good peaker plants that can power up in under 15 minutes. Yeah. And that means that our, the quality of electricity on our grid is just shifting as the, as, the, as the number of cycles per second changes because of changes in demand. And you know, these with we can have really high quality electricity from from new technology that we never had before. Well, it's it's a major transition in our industry. Yes, it, it is really going to become distributed, which yes. is a good thing. Yes, long distance power lines are, yes. are going to become a thing of the past. Well, basically, I think there'll still be a few left. There, yeah, but they're going to be the big ones. Yeah. So uh, you know, it's a transition. We are in a transition. Okay. Well, we got a nice little picture coming up. We here. do, Let's and this a, is a forest in Costa Rica. If I can find it. Uh, there, there we you go. go. Kind of pretty. This is from a publication called The Rising, which I've seen a couple of times now. I think uh -huh. this is the first time I saw it. Costa Rica to go 100% plastic and carbon free by 2021. Wow. wow. <laughs> <laughs> no country has made more environmental progress than Costa Rica. 
the country has got 99% of its energy from renewable resources since 2014. It has doubled the size of its forests, creating a huge carbon sink. Now it plans to be free of plastic and fossil fuels by 2021. We should make clear here what they're talking about when they say free of fossil fuels is net carbon. What they're doing is they are still using fossil fuels in transportation, but they are they're offsetting that by growth of their forests. And the way they've done that, connecting the two, is to say, we're going to put big taxes on fossil fuel sales, you know, vehicles and so forth, and we're going to use those taxes to grow our forests. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. Now, historically, they've generated most of their electricity by hydro. By hydro. Okay, so that's not changing. But and it's, that puts it's them in not a good all. Position. It's not even 99%. It's no, more but like it's a significant 75% amount. percent or something. Okay. Now, in terms of plastic, this is interesting. In terms of plastic use, the country aims to replace all plastics with alternatives that are 100% recyclable or biodegradable. Now, I have a question, Tom. I what hope a, I have an what about somebody who buys a car that has plastic parts? I, I didn't catch anything they about that. They didn't mention that. No. <laughs> they didn't mention that. Yeah, I, w I was uh, hoping that I could find something that would tell me what they really mean by plastic. Because my suspicion is it's not 100% of plastic, but it might be 100% of single-use plastic. Bingo, exactly. Yeah. I was just thinking the same thing. Yeah. Interesting takeaway here. I never heard of it before. The Happy Planet Index, <laughs> <laughs> which takes into account a country's environmental impact and well-being, ranked Costa Rica first in the world. Yeah, I'm not surprised. It imposes fossil, fossil fuel taxes, as you just mentioned, as a means to finance forest protection and investment in renewable energy. There you go. There you go. Just okay. exactly what you said in one sentence. <laughs> <laughs> Our next item is from CNN. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh, this is an interesting one. The Olympics new Swiss headquarters is both eco-friendly and symbolic. And by the way, this is one of the ones I think you should look up. Oh, man. And it's a good, beautiful building. Good pictures here. Good, good pictures. And, you know, a lot I, of good pictures there. I was tempted to include them, but if you include too many, uh, we've got a lot of pictures in we've this. We've got a lot of pictures anyhow, more than normal. The new Swiss headquarters for the Olympic and Paralympic, Paralympic Games is finished, and the building in the city of Lausanne is one of, the mo one of the most sustainable in the world, its architects say. The building occupies a scenic spot on the shore of Lake Geneva inside Louis Bourget Park. And you know, it's interesting. I, I should have included this picture because... It is really short. This, this building it's has, has got two different kinds of roofs. Yep. One of them is the roof it's covered with solar p panels, yeah. and the other is the ro roof covered with, with vegetation. It's a garden. It's a garden. Yeah. I think you can actually go up there and eat lunch. You know, maybe. I think, I don't I, think know. I saw you know, pathways. There's, there's a little pathway. I don't know if that's actually on the roof, but I, uh -huh. I, I, saw, I noticed that too with tables and umbrellas, and it looks like an outdoor restaurant in the middle of a field. <laughs> Something like that, yeah. yeah. Well, I've got a quick takeaway here. Okay. The design of the new headquarters maximizes eco-friendly features. Over 90% of the materials from the buildings being replaced were reused or recycled. The buildings that they originally had there. Rainwater will be collected on site. Yes. Solar panels have been installed on the roof. And this is also interesting. The building facade is so shaped that it, it is, it, it is self-shading from the sun. Yes. Minimizing the need for air conditioning while allowing daylight inside to flood the glass structure. Yes. It, it really looks sharp. It's not. And here's an, what you just mentioned a plant covered green roof terraces and a fitness center were yes. included. It's it looks not, like a nice place to work. It's not that hard to build a house so that the heat of the summer sun is kept out, but the heat of the winter sun is admitted. That's what they've done. Yeah. That's just what they've done. Okay, we are up to Sunday, June yeah, 23rd, with an item from Clean Technica. And we do have a picture of the Ampere Electric EEL. This is interesting. If you look at that re real closely, you'll see there's two propellers on that plane. Yes. <laughs> one in the one front, the front, one in the one back. One in the back, yeah, I know. Personal Airline Exchange, that's the name of a company, orders 50 Ampere EEL hybrid electric commuter airplanes. Air service provides, provider Personal Airline Exchange to expand its on-demand charter service, placed an order for 50 Ampere Air electric 
EEL commuter planes. And they've reserved another 50. Yeah. They have hybrid electric systems like those in cars with both electric and combustion power. And so I would imagine that what happens is when they get into a situation where they're just cruising, they can shut the gas-powered engine off, that's exactly what furl the propellers, sure. and just go on electric power. Yeah, that's just... And that's if their batteries get low, they can... They turn the engine back on. Turn the engine back on. <laughs> Pretty good idea. Yeah. Uh, quick takeaway from there. 90% yeah. cut in fuel costs. Yes. Okay. 50% cut in maintenance. Yes. And that's more important. Yeah. 60% greater uh, takeoff and landing. Wow, I hadn't thought about I, that. I didn't say, I said greater, it's quieter. Quieter, quieter. okay. Quieter, okay, and 0% emissions. So this is a win-win situation. Well, 0% emissions when they're running on electric. On electric, power. of course. Yeah. Okay, and our next item is from CNN. Well, let's see if I can't, oh, come on. You want to put us up, maybe, I'm, or you up, or me up, or to somebody up. Here. There, there we go. go, by golly. <laughs> okay. Okay, now, something's has happened here. <laughs> 70 people. Something has happened here. There it is. It's gone. Yeah. 70 people were arrested at a climate protest outside the New York Times offices. 70 people were arrested outside the New York Times building in Manhattan, according to New York police. Spokesman who said that charges are pending. They were protesting a call uh, to a, uh, they were protesting to call attention to the way news outlets cover the climate crisis, and I don't blame And they were them. particularly down on the New, York Times. the New York Times. Yeah. The protesters were affiliated with Extinction Rebellion, yes. which we have heard, and we'll hear more about yes. that. And they basically climbed up on the awning of the New York Times building to hang some signs. <laughs> and the people from the New York Times weren't very happy. <laughs> they, were not, they were not happy about it. The New York police were not happy about it, although my suspicion is that sometimes those police kind of agree with the people they're all arresting. Well, they had to arrest them, yeah. but they don't have to charge them. And I think in this case, they said they, they weren't going to charge them. Yeah. Okay. Um, our next item is from well, the is BBC, and it is also about whoops well, <laughs> about the climate crisis. Bring the picture up here. Drawing protesters. Climate protesters stormed the Gartzweiler, if I can say you it. You right. got it right. Coal mine in Germany. And Hundred, that's a picture of Gartzweiler. That is a, a picture of them. Hundreds and look of, at those people. There's a lot of there's them. There's a there. lot of people, and the people around the outside edge who are wearing darker clothes, I believe, are the police. They, the climate protesters were all wearing, uh, or almost all wearing, I think that, quite that's protective a pretty good guess. Yeah. clothing. Hundreds of climate change activists ran through fields broke through a police cordon and stormed the Garzweiler open cast coal mine in western Germany to campaign against fossil fuels. Germany has vowed to be carbon neutral by 2050, but the activists say 2050 is not soon enough. Absolutely, they're and right. If you, if you look at this, it looks like the pe little piece of property they're on is at the top of a cliff. But in fact, what it well, is... Well, those walls you can see on the side. Yeah, they're, the sloping, they're sloping down. And my understanding, and I might have got this wrong, is that they suddenly broke from that line and went over that That's exactly looking what happened. thing. I got sent from the from they the article. closed that mine down. Yes, they did. For days. They and did. and the, the mine it supplies lignite which is dirty, 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 dirty coal. The dirtiest. Dirtiest, dirtiest of all coals. Yeah, well, it's not as dirty as peat, but you know. But peat's not coal yet. Yeah, not yet. And, and to a, to a uh, power plant, and you know, the power plant, I believe, had to shut down. The, the people Well, they did upset. because they, they blocked a railway that was going to the coal they, plant. They blocked everything. I got a quick takeaway. Police tried to hold back protesters from entering the mine, which they said was dangerous. However, the protesters ran over the sides of the mine. Yeah. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> Earlier, they blocked a railway line used to transport coal. And uh, this is an interesting takeaway. Recent surveys have shown that climate change tops the list of concerns in Germany. So they were well aware. Yeah, it's, it clearly tops the list of concerns in a bunch of places. In a bunch of places. Well, this but, is about Germany. You know, and yep. the German police are, I think, a little bit used to the idea of telling somebody what 
to do, and the person does it. Well, that's their job. Yeah, and they, I don't think they're, they're, I don't. They, they weren't, well, they weren't going to be able to deal with these no, guys not, if not they got out people. No, unruly. No. There was just too damn many of them. Okay, we are up to Monday, June 24th. Already? Already. <laughs> and we have an item from Newsweek. Well, this is a good one, too. Yeah. VP Mike Pence refuses to directly answer whether climate change is a threat. <laughs> <laughs> During an interview on CNN, um, Vice President Mike Pence said, quote, we will always follow the science, end quote, but he repeatedly refused to give a direct an answer when asked about his beliefs on climate change and when it, whether it poses a threat, threat to the planet. Now, I have an idea that Mike Pence wasn't willing to say, I think this is a problem. Oh, he wasn't absolutely, and and how you know, and he's been on board pretty much saying put up with a flag that that's going to produce, but he certainly wasn't willing to say it. It's not a problem. Well, I got a I got a little takeaway on that, but yeah, go ahead. First of all, there's a two and a half minute video on this site yeah. showing Pence. Yes. Okay. Yes. The second one this is an interesting video, the 43 second video with Bill Nye. Oh. And he's really manic in it. He uses the <laughs> F-bomb twice. Yes. <laughs> he's, he, he, Bill Nye is not known for, for being out of control. But well, he's definitely the, out of control. <laughs> <on this. laughs> he was out of control. And in fact, he had a globe which he cast, set on fire. Yes, he did, and the, yeah. And the fire, you know, the flames <laughs> were like... And he's standing there, you know, screaming. <laughs> you, you watch it just to see because it's a laugh. Oh. Well, we got a quick takeaway here. Yeah, go ahead. The interviewer asked Pence on, on at least four separate occasions whether he believed climate change po posed, posed a threat. Each time, Pence refused to give a committal answer. Yeah. The guy's pulling, he's trying to get Pence to say something. And Pence it, is trying very hard not, not to, say, to anything. say anything. The administration has sought to undo the EPA regulations proposed by its predecessor. And Trump's affordable clean energy rule replaces the Obama Act era clean power plan. Now there's a quote on the article. This is the first rule in EPA's history that acknowledges the existential threat of climate change, but the agency, by the agency's own admission does absolutely nothing to stop it. Yeah. And that's, it. that's a sort of good summary of it. Yeah. Okay. Let's move along here. We, we have another, another picture. We're still up on here. Monday, June 24th. We have a let's see if uh, I can an find item that from New, New Jersey Spotlight. Kind of an ominous looking picture there. Oh, isn't it? well, yeah, <laughs> I suppose. Finally, major movement on governor's promises for offshore wind. And we're talking Maryland, I think. No, we're talking New Jersey. Are we talking? Yeah, we are talking New Jersey. Yep. yep. Ersted Ocean Pro Wind Project established a first-year price of $98.10 per megawatt hour, which is 9.81 cents per kilowatt hour, for the subsidy prov provided by ratepayers, the offshore renewable energy certificate. By way of comparison, the OREC, and I'm not sure, oh, that's the offshore, uh, yep. renewable, offshore energy. renewable energy yep. certificate. Uh, offered in Maryland is priced at $170 for the wind pr uh, project. So there. this is a subsidy this that, is a, that uh, the voters are paying for. Right. For it's, it. the, it's the amount of, uh, it's the minimum that, this, that they're going to make, mm -hmm. basically, as I understand it. Well, this $1.6 billion, yep. 1.1 gigawatt project about 15 miles off the coast of Atlantic City. Yes. Is the largest single offshore wind project ever awarded in this country. So this well, is big. It's big. Thus far. And, the, and New Jersey is saying that it's going to be the biggest offshore wind provider in the, in the Western Hemisphere. I'm until not, the next one. Until the next <laughs> one. That's about what I was going to say. Yeah. Well, it's still a good project for jobs. The price of electricity coming from this is... Is going to be cheap. It's going to be low compared to coal and, and uh, nuclear. And there's nuclear. a quick takeaway here I almost missed. The federal government is exploring building an undersea transmission system. So okay. it looks like they're going to put up the cables. Uh, you know, it's hard to know uh, what these people have in their minds sometimes, but... Um, well, it's going to happen. Yeah, things That's do sure. happen. 
Okay, our it, next. It, it's gonna. It doesn't matter who's gonna pay for it. It's gonna happen. Yeah. It's our just next, a matter of they're arguing who's gonna pay for it. Our next item, and we're still on June twenty fourth, is from CNN. Well, let's let's get this guy up here who's talking. Let's see if I can. I'm, I'm not talking. You're talking. <laughs> There you go, by Joe. Hi, golly. The diesel scandal just destroyed <coughs> profit growth at Mercedes-Benz. Uh-oh. Um, Daimler, the German auto company that makes Mercedes-Benz, reduced its 2019 profit expectations by hundreds of millions of euros. And a euro is worth about a dollar ten. Getting pretty close to a dollar now. Yeah. No, it's, it's... Yeah, it's a dollar ten, but it was up about a dollar thirty at oh, one time. Oh, yeah, okay. The financial downgrade is fallout from the diesel emissions scandal that rocked the German auto industry. Well, it really did. I mean, these guys are all playing games. Mercedes, and VW, BMW, they were all in on the game. One of the reasons why, why um, internal combustion car sales are down in Germany. Nobody wants them. They don't trust them. They don't trust them. <laughs> <coughs> well, okay. there's, a, there's an interesting video on this, John this site. Yep. It's really not about what's going on, but there's a picture of the Daimler concept car, which is really quite a nice car. Well, how'd that happen? I pushed a button. <laughs> 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 I just I just changed the 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 image. I guess you did. I... Yeah, but go ahead, Tom. Well, you were talking we'll about continue a video. looking at the image there. Uh, yeah, I, I was talking about the concept car. Well, here's a quick takeaway. German automakers have faced scrutiny regarding diesel emissions stemming from a 2015 emission by Volkswagen that it rigged millions of diesel engines to cheat on emissions tests. Well, it wasn't VW got caught, but they were all doing it. You know, I, I read this article and I thought, holy smokes, we've got a way in this country to get big business under control. And the way has to do with just a simple change in our legal uh, system, a simple law. Okay. It, and just think about what would happen here if the federal government had a law that said any business, <clears throat> okay, I'll state the problem. You commit a felony, I commit a felony, we are likely to go to prison, at least if we're convicted, right? Well, yeah, but you can't put a corporation in prison. You can't put a corporation <laughs> in prison. So what do they do? They fine it. And Bingo. The, the people who do this are not the people who pay. The right. people who do it are the employees, the CEO, the whatever. And they, okay, maybe they lose a little bit of their bonus, but the, 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 the company pays a big fine like, v, like VW did. Which they write off. Which they write off. <laughs> and, yeah, the yeah. stockholders are Wait left. a second. Slap my wrist. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay, here's the deal. Suppose we have a law that says if you're a company and you're convicted of a felony, you must reorganize as a B Corp. Well, tell us what a B Corp is. Benefit Corporation. Uh -huh. You have to have your you have to have transparency. You've got to show how you're doing things for public good. So that sounds like a good good way to go. There you go. Yeah, bingo. <clears throat> and of course, it does mean that your profitability goes down. B Corps are allowed to have profits, but their profits are probably not going to be as big. But on the other hand, I think it is a justifiable solution to that problem. And believe me, I don't believe for a moment that Monsanto or Bayer that hey, bought them yep. would, be, would be willing to be selling things fraudulently, which I think they might be doing. You know, this whole thing well, with whether a, they're fraudulent or not, they're not good for you. <laughs> Everybody I, needs a little bit of uh, pesticide in their breakfast. Those yeah, right. Great. A little pesticide in your breakfast. What <laughs> what kills insects is good for There's the kids. A little interesting sideline here. Yeah. The revelation of these German automakers cheating has trashed confidence in diesel technology. Yes. <laughs> In Germany, you know, and in Europe. They're not buying diesel They're cars. cheating, so the diesel engine is no good. Yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> it's not logical, but, you know. It costs Volkswagen tens of billions of dollars in recalls, legal penalties, and settlements. But the yeah. other guys got away. So far. So far. Okay, we are up to 
June well, this, 25th. This is, this is interesting. We got a good picture coming Whoop, up here. Wrong one. Yeah. There we go. Well, Let's we start with that. We got two pictures in this. <coughs> we have two pictures for one article. Oh, and this you. is Tuesday, June 25th, yeah. and there's a lot of other pictures in this article. Uh, this is the pole. This is the tower. That's the tower. And look at tell all those <coughs> tires on that vehicle, huh? I counted the axles that I could see, including the one that is c c completely covered by that person. <laughs> and if I'm correct, there's over a hundred tires on those axles. Well, that thing is 500 feet long. And yes. in order to get it to Rotterdam, they had to break it up into three pieces and glue it together in Robert Rotterdam. <laughs> oh, well. So, uh, the, uh, this is GE's 12 megawatt. Say that again, 12, 12 megawatt. megawatts. That's a, that's, 50% bigger than the largest turbine on Earth today, I you guess. You know, it's bigger than a bread box. For sure. <laughs> well, I watch a lot of turbines. Halide X tower and blade make their first appearances. It's just, this is the first vision anybody's yeah. had of this thing. This is also from Clean Technica. The component parts of GE Renewable Energy's Let's mammoth see. new 12 megawatt Halide X wind tur uh, turbine prototype are arriving for installation in Rotterdam. The first turbine blade made its first appearance outside the company's factory in Cherbourg, France. And here is a picture of that blade. You got another picture. Oh, yeah. you did it already. Yeah. <laughs> now, Flip I want to I want to point them. out that there is the blade, and next to the blade, just to the there's right. There's a man. There's a man. You know, I think you could put a double wide in that thing, you know, or, or maybe even two double wides, one on top of each other. I'm talking about double wide mobile homes. That, that thing is gigantic. I mean, just standing there. Well, I got some, I, I've got some numbers, I think. Yeah, go ahead. Well, here's a, a quick takeaway. Well, you read that, you read it, didn't you? Yeah. The first, yeah. The turbines will measure 850 feet in height. Yeah. When they're, when they're operational, boast a 720 foot rotor diameter. Yeah. That's big, guys. That's yes, big. it is. It's capable of generating enough clean electricity for 16,000 households. That's just one of them. Just one. Okay. If we had one of those things dedicated to Brattleboro, we'd have more energy than we need. And the, the tower, let's flip back to the tower a second. Okay. That's 500 feet long. Yeah. Okay. And now flip up to the turbine blade. These are 350 feet long. Which means that they're a little bit longer than a football field, including the end zones. Absolutely. That's just what I was going to say. <laughs> they're the longest wind turbine blades to date. And here's the, here's the interesting thing. They're made of fiberglass and balsa wood. Yes. <laughs> together with resin. Yeah. So they're, they're like fiberglass, like fiberglass cars and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, that's right. That's amazing. Okay. Well, our, we're moving along here. Our next item is from rte.ie, a from web Ireland, address that tells you that it is in Ireland. Yeah. G20. Global, well, I'm going to bring us both up. Oh, good idea. <laughs> that way G20, have to look at G20 really coal really subsidies sad. rise despite climate pledges. Despite promising a decade ago to phase out fossil fuel subsidies, the world's leading economies more than doubled subsidies to coal-fired power plants between 2014 and 2017, putting climate goals at risk, according to a report from the London-based Overseas Development Institute. So it seems like they're doing, saying one thing and doing another. It sure does. And it's really takeaway here. astonishing, all things China considered. and Japan were the biggest providers of public finance for coal power. Yes. Okay. Followed by South Korea and India. Yes. In Bangladesh, Indonesia, Pakistan, and Vietnam, foreign backing for coal power is slowing adoption of cleaner renewables. Okay, so, it, so it's still, it, still a good investment. Yeah. Coal subsidies continue in many places, and this is the reason, because politicians prefer to delay decisions that could have political consequences. Oh, man. And they don't mention, but they're also getting little contributions here and there. Yeah, a few contributions like the nearly a billion or maybe over a billion dollars that they, mere bagatelle. That mere bagatelle that Freedom Partners put into the last uh, presidential election with a, and they, the con, uh, uh, elections, uh, con congressional elections that went around on with it. And who is Freedom Partners? That's, that's, that's uh, Koch's, isn't it? It's the Koch brothers and about 300 of their good buddies. Yeah. <laughs> this is uh, a democracy duh. we're in. Democracy and, and in action. It's, 
you know, you, it, when this is the result of, um, of uh, Citizens United. Okay, should we go on? Yeah, we're moving along here. We have we're an item from Daily Commercial here. News. Yeah, let's pull that picture up. Yeah, let's put that picture up. This is interesting. Yeah. BC, British Columbia, light, lighthouses go from diesel to renewables. British that's a picture of Merry Island in near Vancouver. It's about yeah. 50 miles from Vancouver. And those are very small wind turbines on there. but They are. They're tiny. Right below them, you can see that there's solar power there, too. And when you consider the amount of light that's required to be cast out by, by a lighthouse, that's a significant amount of electricity. Okay. Well, yeah. British Columbia's 27 staffed uh, lighthouses are shifting from diesel power to renewable energy with several recently getting solar and wind turbines. Ten lighthouses are expected to make the changeover in about a year, while the other 17 will be retrofitted as diesel generators age. Well, the solar and wind equipment is expected to pay for itself in about four years. So Not a bad it's a good return. deal. Yeah, it is. The high annual cost of diesel and transportation justified a decision. A diesel generator will remain as backup, just in case. Yep. Okay. And Mary Island, which you're looking at here, was recently retrofit with two 5-kilowatt solar arrays, which you can see, and two 3-kilowatt wind turbines. Very now small. that's small. We were just talking about yeah. a 12-megawatt A little turbine. too big to hold in your lap, but, you know, they're... Well, they're that's all they need. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we've got But they're got tiny. A... They, they're the kind of thing you can put up in a farmer's field. Oh, yes, absolutely. And farmers do put them up. They, farmers put up wind turbines that are a lot bigger than bigger that. Bigger than that, yeah. We are up to Wednesday, June 26th, and Already? we've got an item here from Reeve, or R-E-V-E. We've got minutes left. I think we're going to make it. I think we will. <laughs> India plans to set up 500 gigawatts. 500 gigawatts. 500 gigawatts? Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh. Well, their plans of renewable energy capacity mm -hmm. by 2030. That's, is, that's ambitious. Yeah, it is. 500 gigawatts is the equivalent of, I'm going to guess, about 13 or 14 large nuclear power plants. Um, I'm, yeah. Well, 130 you or 140. They updated uh, Yankee, it was a half a gigawatt. Yeah, 130 or 140 large. Yeah. Am I, what am I doing with my math here? <laughs> I don't know. It's 130 or 140 large nuclear reactors. At the 17th meeting of the International Renewable Energy Agency Council in Abu Dhabi, um, India's Secretary of Ministry to New and Renewable Energy announced that India plans to put up 500 gigawatts of renewable energy capacity by 2030. 500 gigawatts would be 500 nuclear reactors, except the, the, the uh, renewable energy capacity. Uh, uh, capacity factor is only about 40% of that. Of well, what they're presently installed, what they're presently using is 80 gigawatts yeah. of renewables. And they're they going plan to, to achieve 225 gigawatts of renewable capacity by 2022, including large hydro. So they're counting large hydro. They're hydrogen. counting large hydro. 100 gigawatts is to come from PV and concentrated solar. Wind and energy will contribute 60 and the rest will come from hydro. They've got to do a bunch of stuff in India. They've got serious, serious, serious problems well, right now. I think they're well aware of it, and they're bringing the people of India from the 19th century up to the 21st century. But they've century. got to supply water, for example, to, to places like Chennai, where four and a half million people have got no water. That's a problem. It's a problem. And, and you know, the, the anyway... We should probably move on. We've right, got an item from Wind Power on. Engineering and a picture of Pennsylvania. That is, the entire state of Pennsylvania looks like this, folks. <laughs> well, wait, 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 click see, on it, let's Tom. see what we, you know, click. There you go. On. That's Using what Pennsylvania looks like. Now you know <laughs> somebody talks about Pennsylvania. That's there what it, it looks like. That's a nice looking spot. It looks it like is. a park or something. Yeah, it reminds me of Scranton. It reminds me of <laughs> <laughs> West Pittsburgh. I, wa I drove by Scranton at night once, and they had waste from coal uh, mines that had caught fire. Yeah, and so it's still burning. Glowing mountains. Yeah, they're still there. burning. They can't put them out. They can't put them out. Well, Reading, Pennsylvania sets a 100% clean energy goal. Reading, wow. Reading City, City Council in Pennsylvania has unanimously voted 
to adopt a resolution establishing a goal of powering the entire community with 100% renewable energy by 2050. The city will prioritize energy efficient and low cost solutions to, in order to benefit residents and they are specifically targeting in this people who um, do not have much money. Yeah, low income. The, low the, income the, this particular plan targets low income people. Yeah. So well, this is well, uh, Reading, in case you don't know, is about 50 miles west of Philadelphia. Okay. Okay, and uh, the city is creating a municipal energy master plan to transition city facilities to 100% clean energy. Mm -hmm. But what they don't mention in the article is what the private sector is going to do for the rest of the people. Of, of yeah. Spain. Apparently, they're on board because they uh, they're serious about this. Yep. And by the way, in case anybody's wondering about Reading, yeah, it is the t the 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 city that gave its name to the Reading Railroad that you yeah. come across when you're playing Monopoly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> among, among other things. Let's and our take final one last item. look at Reading. <laughs> <laughs> Where is the terminal? I don't see the railroad. <laughs> Okay, our final item this is, is, from, the last item, is yeah. from Clean Technica. Eight minutes solar and NV Energy plan a new solar power plant with 540 megawatt hours of battery storage. That's a lot. <laughs> I guess it is. The Southern Bighorn Solar and Storage Center will include a 300 megawatt AC solar array. It's considerably more than 300 megawatts DC with a 540 megawatt hour lithium ion battery storage system. It will be built in Clark County on the Moapa River Indian Reservation about 30 miles north of Las Vegas. I think the, the, the Hornsdale Power Reserve battery, which is 100 megawatt hours, is still the largest in the world. I might be mistaken about that. We've been seeing a lot of information about new storage facilities coming in. I don't know if any of them have been completed. Yeah. But this thing is five times, five times the size. It's the biggest of, one that, that's existing now. Yeah, it's that's more than... That's the one in Australia, right? <coughs> that's right. Well, it's interesting here because Southern Bighorn's power will be fully dispatchable. Yeah. Which means that it can provide power 24 7. Yeah. And it guess will be what? delivered at an average price of $35 per megawatt hour. It's 35 cents per kilowatt hour. Which is extremely low yeah, when you considering, consider that it's replacing peaking power plants. Well, it's below the cost of fossil fuel based generation. For? Just regular mainline generation. Forgetting peaking plants. What was the price again? Three and a half cents. Three and a half cents per kilowatt hour. Yeah. So it's destroying peaking plants altogether. And it's, Absolutely. And it, it, it is something with which so, uh, nuclear power can't compete. It's something with which, um, uh, well, nuclear power can only compete with that. In with an, the subsidies that are built in. With, 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 and if the plant has already been paid down, because new nuclear power is extremely expensive. Very, well, the financing's ridiculous. Yeah, and these things... Um, they're, they're going in in Nevada, which is next to California, where General Electric is closing down that gas-powered plant already because it can't compete. And these things are just going to demolish any hope of, of uh, selling electricity from gas-powered plants. Well, 8 Minutes Solar, despite their name, it's a company. Yes. And it's the largest solar developer in the U.S. Yes. NV Power is the local utility, NV Energy. And right. It covers virtually all of the state, at least all the big concentrations Isn't of NV people. Isn't NV Power part of? Um, uh, what's his name? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know. Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett. He owns it. Yeah. yeah he owns it. NV so Power. He this owns is it. this is a big company. It would have to be a big company to put in a battery of this. Yeah, it's an interesting takeaway here. The Moapa Paiutes, which yes. is where the storage part. Uh, plants going to be located, have become a national clean energy leader and will host <laughs> over a gigawatt of solar on its 72,000 acre reservation. Yeah. So they know what's going on. Yeah, this is better, I think, than for the, for the Native Americans than casinos. I think so. And the next <laughs> sentence says that Native American lands located in the lower 48s could produce more than four times the total energy generation in the United States. They have an opportunity here, and it looks like some of them at least are grabbing onto it. 
Yep. 15, yet, in spite of this, 15% of people living on tribal lands have no access to the electrical grid. Well, it's a little bit of an inequity, isn't That's it? That's going to be changing. We have to stop this delightful fun well, that we're, we're having. We're out of time, I guess. We are running out of time. How about that? How about that? Why don't you put us <laughs> both gonna, up? Uh, so they can see what we look like. We huh? can see what we look like. <laughs> I'm sorry for any nightmares you, we produce with our appearance. <laughs> I think all in all, the news is better, more good than bad. I think so. Good for most, bad for some. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> See you Take next it time. easy, guys.